Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be playing Game Dev Tycoon. Now, this is a very fun game, and as you can see, I've already played this game before. I've actually beaten it with uh, over $200 billion in the bank. So, uh, we're going to start a new one for this Let's Play series. As you can see, this, this is my crew in the last one. Let's start a new one. Um, I'm not going to skip any tutorials for the sake of you guys in case you don't know how the game works so hello there it seems that you've already played blah 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 don't skip welcome to day game dev tycoon in this business simulation you've been transported back in time to start your very own game development company right at the beginning of the pc revolution so this is like 1980 basically like around there maybe a little bit later in the next 30 years you can build your dream company create best-selling games gain fans and become the leader of the market. Okay. Before you can start your adventure, you can give your upcoming company a name. Ugh. Oh, should we name this? Um, let's name this company... Um, hmm. Sly Deathman. Take care of that. Sly Deathman Inc. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, who should our player's name be? Let's name him. Um, Fell. Well, that's not how you spell Phil at all. Phil. Um, I don't know. Robertson. Why not? That could be a real person's name, right? Just gonna close my eyes and randomly scroll through here. Alright. So this is Phil Robertson. Alright. If you ever want to review the tutorial message, then you can do so in the health menu. Alright. Good thing to know. Congratulations, you've just started your very own game development company. At the moment, your office is in a garage and you're the only employee. But don't worry, many successful businesses have started out this way. Let's start developing your first game, close this message, then click anywhere just on the screen to bring up the action menu. Alright, so develop a new game. Before development can begin, you have to decide what kind of game you want to create and give your game a name. You can also select with which graphic technology your game should use. Your options are initially limited, but once you have a bit of experience, you'll be able to unlock new options. Alright. Um, it's probably always better to know what you want to do before you name it. So, let's go Medieval. Um, RPG. Hmm. At this stage, I think 20,000 is too much. We'll go PC. Alright, so it's an evil RPG. Um, hmm. Let's call this, uh, for all you Skyrim fans out there, the Elder Scrolls. Uh, we're gonna use 2D graphics V1 for 10,000. And we're gonna start developing the game. And, oh, what are you doing? Phil, a bug already? Come on, you're better than that. Game development runs through three stages. At the beginning of each stage, you can decide what areas of the game you want to focus on. Picking the right focus for your game greatly increases the points you generate. Think about what areas are important for your game, and decrease the focus areas you think are less important. If you want to read a brief description of how the different areas please, refer to the help menu. Alright, so, this is a medieval RPG, so I think stories and quests is really important. I think the engine would be the least as of now, so sort of like that. I want the gameplay to be pretty good. Alright, come on, Phil. Game development has now started. While developing your game, you will generate game points when you... That which you can see bubbling up. Game points are divided into design points and technology points. The more points you generate, the better the game will be. 
From time to time there will be also be bug points generated. These points become less likely once you gain experience. Bugs need to be fixed before the game can be released and increase development time and cost. Alright. Oh, look at Phil go. Look at all that. Uh, it's an RPG, so dialogue would be pretty important. AI, I think, should stay there, and level design just a little bit higher than that. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, he's going ham. What are you doing? Don't scratch your head. Work. There you go. During development, you can also select additional features for your game. Right now, you can only pick basic sounds, but your options will increase quickly. Selecting additional features makes the game generally better, but increases its cost. You will see the graphic type when you selected the, your defined game. This is just to remind you of your choice. You cannot change the type of graphics mid-game. Alright, so yeah, we're going to keep that. World design way up there. Graphics, I think, should be a little bit better than sound. And then we'll do that. Yeah, Phil. Oh, look at that. The development of your first game is now complete. You can press the finish button to publish your game, but you should only do that once you fix the majority of bugs. Releasing game without fixing bugs can severely affect your ratings, so you should only even ever consider that if you need the cash that and you can't afford to wait. All right. Yeah, Phil, fix those bugs. Finish. Alright. The development of your game is now finished. While developing games, you can experience and improve your skills. When development is completed, you'll be presented with a summary of the experience game. Alright. Ooh, new topic, new combo, and a great combo. So, we got 1.6 times what we would have gotten if we got none of that. Nice. Yeah, Phil, gaining experience there. Your game is now complete and will be handed off to publishing. We should see reviews and sales coming in on the game soon. You finish your first game. While you develop the game, you also gain research points. You can use these points to unlock new options for future games. To bring up the research menu, close this message, then click anywhere on the screen to bring up the action menu. Alright, so yeah, those are our research points, so... What should we research? Research is important to unlock new options and better games. You should try to save enough research points to be able to create your own game engine. This will greatly improve your games. Hint, try to develop games with a different topic and genre combinations for a slight research boost. Yeah, so I think we're going to save up till we get 50 research points so we can make our own game engine, because that's when your games can really start taking off. So, I'm just going to wait for the game reviews up. Oh, the first reviews are our nearly released game, The Elder Scrolls Game Engine. Alright, you know, it wasn't too bad for a first game. Ooh, saw a 10, nice. Oh, game hero, they love it. Alright. So overall, it was a pretty good game. Let's see how much money. Sly Deathman Inc., a newcomer in the game industry, has released their first game, The Elder Scrolls. The game received favorable reviews. With such a good start, Sly Deathman Incorporated are sure to gain fans quickly. Oh. Alright, not too shabby. 4.2 thousand in the first week. Number 34 on the charts. Wow. Now that your game is on sale, you will receive the income of the game every week. You can see how well your game is doing by looking at the sales graph on the top right of the screen. The Elder Scrolls was so successful that we now have 17 fans. Alright, 17 fans. Ooh, come on. Yes, over 10,000. The Elder Scrolls has achieved a company sales record with over 10,000 units sold. This is an important milestone in the history of Sly Death Man Incorporated. Alright, so while this is happening, I would say it would be a good time to start developing another game. So that, in case anything happens, uh, we don't go down the shitter and lose all of our money. So let's make this a military um, military simulation for the PC. 
Um, hmm. I guess. What should it be called? I guess it would sort of be like Call of Duty, since it's the military simulation, so what should we call it? Uh, very creative here. Tour of Duty. Oh yeah, that was creative right there. That was completely original. Start development. Alright, so it's a simulation, so stories and quests, not that much. Engine all the way up there, and I guess gameplay stays the same. So it's basically the same thing just backwards. Come on, Phil, stop scratching your head. We need to make this new game. Oh no, what are you doing making bugs, man? Alright, so simulations, dialogues, way down there. AI. A little bit higher level design, a little bit higher than that. Okay. Nice, nice. Oh, what are you. Bugs, come on. What are you doing? And world design, we can bring down just a little bit. I bring graphics and sound up. Alright, the Elder Scrolls is now off the market. It sold 18,164 units, generating 127,184 in sales. Nice. Oh, jeez. Two bugs at once. Fix them. How can you do this to me, Phil? Alright, finish. I don't think we broke any milestones here. Recent market studies show us that the Govador G64 is steadily outselling competitors in the PC sector. Consumers prefer the lower price, greater availability, and the flexible hardware configuration over other home computers. Experts say that this might spell the end of competing hardware manufacturers. Oh no! Oh, there is a new record, nice. Is it a great combo? Yeah, it's a great combo again. Alright. Our world design. Very nice. And our fill. Our fill is awesome. Let's release the game. What are the reviews? Alright, the first reviews came in. Oh. Alright, it's very enjoyable from Star Games. Oh no. Informed Gamer. They liked it, but not as much as Star Games did. Game Hero thought it was beautiful. Thank you, Game Hero. We worked very hard and uh, all games. What do you mean it could have been more? We put our heart and soul into this and you're going to give us a six? Alright. Sold a lot more than last time. 6.1 in the first week. Hi there. I've just finished Tour of Duty and I'm impressed by your talent. I'm in the contracting business and we can use skills like yours. If you're ever short on cash, just let me know and I will see if we have, if I have some work for you. Jason. Contracts have been unlocked. To see available contracts, close this message and then bring it, and then click anywhere on the screen to bring up the action menu. Uh, find contract work. Contracts are a useful tool for to earn some extra cash when your balance is low and can also be useful to generate a small number of research points. Contracts require you to generate a certain amount of design and technology points before the time runs out. Decide carefully what contract you accept. If you miss the deadline for a contract, you will have to pay a penalty, so it's better to start out with the smaller contracts and see how much you can handle. Um, I think we could do that. I'd say we start out with this. Alright, we almost have 50 research points, so we can make that game engine. Alright, free 13,000 bucks right there. Jason here, I just got word from a client that the contract was completely successful. Excellent work. Usually I have new contracts every 6 months, so check back sometime. So yeah, up here it shows what year it is, how many months you're in, and how many weeks you're in. Uh, find contract work again. Yeah, no. 
According to rumors, the Japanese company Ninvento is planning to launch its very own gaming console. Ninvento is known for a widely successful arcade game, Dinky King. Alright. Many industry experts doubt that the home gaming consoles will take off, but we are eager to see what Ninvento will deliver. Wow, we already have 14.5. Oh. 14.9. We have over 202,000. 204,000. We're just rolling in money. Alright, so. Develop a new game. Let's make it in space. I'm making an adventure. Actually, let's make a strategy. Space strategy game. For the PC. I'm gonna call this, um. Hmm. Planet Beta Six. All right, Planet Beta Six. Two D graphics. Start development. And a bug. That's the first thing you can come up with. Oh wow! It sold fifteen thousand four hundred ninety-nine units, generating one hundred eight thousand five hundred thirty-five in sales. It's a strategy, so. Keep everything the same. And we can make a game engine after this. Nice. Uh, AI all the way up there, a little, a little bit lower down. Alright. World design would be way up there. Graphics and sound would be lower down. Today, Ninvento has confirmed recent rumors and announced their plans to release a new home gaming console called TSE early next year. The console features cartridge-based games and a uniquely designed controller. Yeah, so basically that's like the NES. I would hope I wouldn't have had to necessarily point that out to all of you. Alright, so fix those bugs. Alright, so I don't think we broke any design record, but I think we broke a technology record. Yeah. Alright, is it a great combo? It is a great combo. Alright, engine level 2, gameplay level 2, oh. Oh. Level design level 2, AI level 2, world design level 2, graphics, what are you doing? Sound level 2, and Phil Robertson level 2. Alright, let's release the game to the public. The first reviews came in. Oh. Alright, it was a nice experience, Stargame says. Informed Gamer thought it was quirky, but good. Game Hero said it was enjoyable. And All Games said it was beautiful. Not too bad, not too bad. Alright, not as good as the last one's first week scales, but it's still better than our first. Alright, over 10,000. While this is happening, let's start making our custom game engine. So research that. Huh. I like how it has the Pong in the background. It's nice. Alright, you have successfully researched custom game engine. You can now create your own game engines. To get started, close this message and click anywhere to bring up the action menu. Alright. Create custom engine. 2D graphics v2, 50,000. 80,000. Oh. So that's gonna cost 120,000 right there. And let's call this the. Slimatic 1.0. Put a hyphen in there. Create engine. All right, we're gonna have to put 70 into that. You are now creating your custom game engine. Once the engine is finished, you'll be able to use it when creating new games. All right, today the TES by Ninvento has been released, and we can research a gamepad now. Ah, oh, that sucks because. 
since we just started making the game engine, now we would have to make a whole new one, just put game pads in there. Uh, so we're gonna have to wait a while till we start getting more money, because it wouldn't be worth it just to make a whole nother game engine just to add that in. Alright, the Slimatic is now complete. Congratulations, first custom game engine is now ready, you should try using it in the next game. So, let's develop a new game. Let's make it... Eh, I don't want to make it a sports, though. Let's go back to our roots. Let's make it a medieval game. A medieval RPG, actually. Let's make it a medieval action game. For the... Mm, I would do that, but you need to pay $80,000 for a license, and we don't have a gamepad either, so stick with the PC, and we'll use the Slimatic. We're going to call this hmm, Medieval Action Game. Um, let's see. The Bubonic. Huh? Where's that be? What are you doing? The bubonic? Hmm. The bubonic war. And if you don't know, the bubonic plague is basically Black Death, which started in Europe during the Middle Ages and just ravaged everything. Alright, so stories and quests. Get a linear story and a save game in there. Make the engine a little bit lower. Gameplay all the way up. Alright, Phil. Already working a lot harder now that he is level 2. Actually, you have a little bit of dialogue. AI down. Level to sign up. Alright, let's make a mono sound, put the sound a little bit up higher now, and graphics up a little higher because that's a V2, and, alright, I think we're gonna, yep, we're gonna break records here, nice, alright, Phil, fix those bugs, finish. At 86,000, so this one's gonna need to make us money. Alright, new records. It was a new combo and a great combo. Only 1.4 though. Alright, so story quest dialogues, both level 2. Graphics now level 2 as well. 2D graphics v2. Um, over half now, so that's nice. Let's release the game. And we can research a joystick as well. First reuse came in. Alright, played it for days. Star Games, nice. Informed Gamer, thought it was very enjoyable. Game Hero, thought it was a nice experience. And All Games, thought it was very good, giving it an 8. Alright, nice, nice. That custom game engine paid off. As you can see right there, 9.7 thousand in the first week. Oh my god. Already got over a hundred thousand. Ooh, there was a little, little rise in the sales. Alright, it, it didn't do too bad at all. Let's research the gamepad. The recently released TES Home Console by Nintendo has proved to be massive success. Sale numbers have exceeded expectations by far. As one customer says, I love the games that come with the TES, and playing with the controller is much more fun than with the on a keyboard. The 
Symphonic War is now off the market. It sold 29,882 units, generating 209,209 in sales. 209, 209. All right, so we're going to research that, and I think this would be a good place to end it here, so thank you for watching. Um, make sure to like, favorite, and subscribe if you want to get more updates on this, and um, I'll see you next time.